Hello and welcome to this series of videos in which I seek to demonstrate participation in an SAP Ariba reverse auction from the perspective of a supplier. In this second video, I shall demonstrate the more complex English reverse auctions, events that may contain many items and lots, and so may require a different style of navigation and interaction from the supplier perspective. Much of the content in the first video of this series on simple English reverse auctions remains relevant, so you may wish to seek out that video as well. A complex reverse auction for me is an auction with potentially many items for the supplier to review and bid on. Typically the buyer may allow greater time for this type of auction to reflect the greater workload on the part of bidders. Lot and item sequencing techniques are also used to split the auction into more manageable chunks. Reverse auctions are highly configurable. This means that it is impossible to cover every possible permutation available to a buyer in this video. But through a number of example auctions, I shall demonstrate the main features and most common permutations. Most SAP Ariba auctions are preceded by an RFP. This means that the seller has already taken part in an SAP Ariba event, so I don't intend here to duplicate the supplier onboarding process. I've clicked through to my auction. The first thing that I want to highlight is the preview status and the time remaining in that status. Preview status means that this particular auction is not yet open for bidding, but will be in another 3 minutes and 43 seconds. The clock in the top right corner of your auction screen is useful throughout the event as it tells you how long is remaining in the current status of the event. In this screen we can view the basic content of our auction. You see here two items with quantities of 50 and 20 respectively. We may be able to see some details on event timing and bidding rules. On the left sidebar we can navigate through the stages of the auction although for the simple English reverse auction it is more common that we navigate by clicking stepwise through our event. In this case, our next step is to review prerequisites by clicking the blue button highlighted. It is quite normal for the next step to be an agreement that must be accepted for you to gain access to the event, so accept and OK. Now to select lots, I can see from the scroll bar at the right hand side of the screen that there is more than a single screen of lots and items in this event. I can review my lots and items using that scroll bar and select the lots using the buttons to the right of the lot names. But in this video, I shall demonstrate how to select using Excel, which is my preferred method for an auction with a large number of lots and items. Clicking on the Select Using Excel button, I export my data by clicking on Download Content, as shown. The exported file can be saved to your desktop or other place for future use, as you will be retrieving it for upload later in this process. Navigate through this file using the worksheet tabs at the bottom of the file. On the Other Content Worksheet, you can review the lots and associated items available in the auction. Columns D and E in this worksheet are titled Intend to Respond and Reason for Not Bidding. You can see that I have selected Yes in the cells corresponding to lots A and B and No for lot C. On selecting No, I've gone further into column E to select a reason from the drop-down list. I save this file again, ready to import my selection. Back to the SAP Ariba screen, I've chosen my saved file after clicking on the Choose File button at Step 3, uploaded in Step 4, and then confirmed my choice in the next pop-up box. Having accepted my lots for bidding, I can now see the content and that the event is in preview stage for a further 3 minutes and 19 seconds. During this time, I'm unable to place a bid.
In a large event, there are four major ways to facilitate the bidder's task to navigate, place bids and receive feedback. The first is to sequence the lots in series. The event shown on this screen is sequenced in series. We can see that lot A has 9 minutes and 11 seconds to run. On the left sidebar of the auction screen, it's possible to navigate between the lots. I've shown the navigation part of the screen on the bottom right inside a red box, but you find it on the left sidebar. Clicking onto lot B shows that lot B remains in preview. This means that you are unable to bid on lot B until the bidding on lot A is complete, including any extensions due to a soft close. If there were a lot C, D, E, etc., these two would run in series sequence, not opening until the previous lot had closed. The second sequencing method available to the buyer is staggering the closing times of the lots. This differs from series sequencing because all of the lots are open for bidding from the very beginning. You can see that lot A has 9 minutes and 45 seconds to run. Lot B has 19 minutes and 18 seconds. And that lot C has 28 minutes and 51 seconds left. Essentially, each lot in the auction closes 10 minutes after the previous one, but is open all of the time to receive bids and generate feedback. A third method that the buyer may use is parallel sequencing. All items open and close at the same time. You can see that the, seller on the, the slider on the right shows that there are many items that are unseen without using it. The time allowed in this auction is often much greater than usual. You can see I have allowed 30 minutes here. There is an option to export the auction and import bids via an Excel spreadsheet that I shall demonstrate. Click first on the Excel import shown on the bottom right of the screen. This is a similar process to that previously demonstrated when confirming lots. So once again, click on download content. Your exported file has two worksheets, one with instructions, the other with the content information you need to place your bids. All of the currency, unit of measure, bid improvement requirements and quantity information is shown on this worksheet. Enter your prices in the price column and save the spreadsheet for import. And just as demonstrated with the lot review, choose your file at step 3 and upload at step 4. This time you receive a pop-up instructing you to click the Submit Entire Response button. This is an important step as although uploaded, your bids are not yet submitted. Having clicked Submit Entire Response, you'll be able to see your rank displayed. You may now continue to bid on an item by item basis, as with the simple auctions, or you may again export the event and make modifications and uploads from the spreadsheet. A fourth way to manage a large event is through basket lot bidding. I'm back at the lot selection stage for this one. You can see that lot A has three items associated with it. The basket lot works on the basis of a single total price for all of the items in the lot, with an extra final stage as shown on the sidebar, in which the bidder is required to enter the price per item once the auction has closed. I've submitted my total price for my basket lot and received my rank. I can see the items associated with the lot, but do not have a rank associated with each item. At auction close, the bidder updates the item totals corresponding with the lot price and submits the pricing. You can see that I have submitted a bid in error and received a message advising me that the numbers do not add up. I correct my bid, click update totals and submit for the final time. Thank you for watching this video. Others in the series cover simple English reverse auctions, Dutch reverse auctions and Japanese reverse auctions. The video on simple English reverse auctions contains information on bidding, feedback and event close strategies that are equally relevant to the complex auction, so please do seek that video out for further details. 
If you have any further questions at this stage, please contact the buyer responsible for your auction for more information.